Hi. Proving our proficiency in English is important when we are planning to move abroad, especially to an English speaking country. So today we will be discussing on OET versus IELTS and which one is better or which one you should choose. So why do you need this exam? If you have finished your primary medical qualification in a non-English speaking country like in my case India, we need to take OET or IELTS even if we are a British citizen before registering with the GMC. For the PLAP route, the English language test needs to be taken before the PLAP test itself but in the Royal College route or in sponsorship routes like MTI, we need to give it only before the GMC application. So we can give it either before our MRCS exams or in between or even after the exams. To understand which one suits you or which one is better, we'll try to compare both of the exams side by side. So first, coming to OET, it is specific to the healthcare while IELTS is a general academic test. There are sections for reading, writing, listening and speaking in both of these exams. Minimum score for OET is B in each sections like B in reading, writing, listening and speaking. While in IELTS it is 7 uh, in each section and overall 7.5. That means if you have an overall 8 but in one of the subject you score only 6.5 that means you will have to give the exam once again. So a uh, time for the OET exam is approximately three hours while IELTS it's two hour 45 minutes and coming to uh, resetting. So if in case we didn't pass any of the one part maybe speaking or any any one of the parts we'll have to retake all the parts especially for doctors but in case of nurses I've heard that they need to give only individual parts. While in case of IELTS, we have to take all parts again. The validity for both OET and IELTS is two years. The exam frequency is around 24 times a year in OET, while IELTS is conducted 48 times a year. So it's more frequent, you get more frequent slots in IELTS. OET is rec recognized by the healthcare regulatory bodies ex uh, like GMC and also by the immigration authorities for healthcare workers. IELTS is more widely recognized by the universities, reg regulatory bodies and immigration authorities as well. There are 12 versions for the OET like specific for each category like medicine, nursing, radiographers, etc. While for IELTS there are only two versions either academic or general training and for us we have to select the academic version. OET is recognized in more than 44 countries including UK, New Zealand, Australia, Singapore, Dubai but when compared to IELTS it's not as widely accept accepted. You can see that IELTS is accepted in more than 140 countries. The cost of OET is a bit higher that is 250 to 330 GBP while IELTS is only 150 to 175 GBP. But the passing rate in OET is higher and it is a more or less more easier exam while the IELTS is a difficult exam and the passing rate is a bit lower when compared to OET. Resources are a bit less for OET, the coaching centers and the materials available are also less while for IELTS there are more centers, more coaching centers and more materials available. The results uh, will be published approximately 16 day, business days after the exam but sometimes it may take up to a month while IELTS usually the results are given 13 uh, after 13 business days after the test and it can also take up to a month in some cases. Now that we have compared both OET and IELTS, uh, some additional details that we need to remember. A B score overall in OET or 7.5 overall in IELTS is required for GMC registration or PLAB exam as discussed before. 
But if you are applying for the UK Foundation Program or direct entry to standalone FI2, then you need a higher score, that is 400 in all sections in OET. So by 400, uh, it means that it's still the B score, but you need a higher score. B score ranges from 350 to 440. So you um, you will need to score at least 400 in each section if you need to apply for these programs. And in case of IELTS, you need 7.5 in each section uh, for applying for these programs. For job or visa purposes, IELTS or OET is accepted as long as it is accepted by the GMC. And you have to remember for every one person who passed the IELTS, four passed the OET. So consider all these factors before uh, choosing the test. You would have come across something called IELTS for UK VI. It is same as IELTS, but it is specific for the UK visa purposes. It uh, like for standard visitors visa for PLAB 2 or for tier 2 visa. It is more costly than IELTS and from October 1, 2019, IELTS for UK VI will no longer be needed to apply for tier 2 visa and you have to simply appear for the OET or the academic IELTS um, that is sufficient for the visa purposes as well. You may come across something called UK NARIC, that is UK National Recognition Information Center, and they have an English language assessment service. This is helpful only for the tier two visa application and not accepted for your PLAB or GMC registration. It's not an exam and it doesn't expire, Basically, our medical degree needs to be taught in English. They check all the details and then they give a certificate uh, proving your English language proficiency, which you can use for the tier two visa application. It is not accepted by the UK foundation training uh, or uh, training program, uh, nor by the core training or specialty training in the UK. And the cost uh, for the UK NARIC is 150 GBP if it is standard pathway if you need it within 48 hours, 287 GBP, and 347 GBP if you need it within 24 hours. Few details on the structure of each test. The OET has four parts. First one is listening, which is for 50 minutes, and it has two parts with 20 to 28 questions in it, and it is same for everyone. That includes doctors, nurses, everyone has the same questions. Reading part is for one hour and it also has two parts in it and it's also same for everyone. Coming to the writing section, it is for 45 minutes and will be given one task. It can be either referral or transfer letter or discharge letter or advice to the patient or the carer and it uh, varies from uh, profession to profession. That, that means for doctors, nurses, physiotherapists, everyone it will be different. Uh, and it will be related to your profession. And the next one is speaking, which is also specific to the profession. And it is for 20 minutes and you will be given two tasks. That is two role plays during this 20 minutes. Uh, it will be conducted in a private room and we act as a professional in that uh, role play. And the interlocutor acts as a patient or relative or carer. So you have to remember that the interlocutor is only there um, in order to complete that role play but he has or he or she has no role in the marking system so they just record whatever we are saying and that recording is sent uh, and then it's been marked by someone else so uh, they are not the examiners they are just interlocutors coming to the structure of the IELTS exam it also has four parts. That is uh, the first one, listening, which lasts for 30 minutes. And there are there will be four parts in it, and it can be any topic. Reading, one hour, and there will be three passages, and any it can be, again, any topic. Writing lasts for one hour, two tasks, and speaking, 14 minutes, three parts on any topic. Now, do you need a coaching for OET or IELTS? In my opinion, yes. Uh, if you have a proper coaching, then one month time will be more than enough 
for uh, clearing this exam in the first attempt itself. Also, find a study partner and practice the speaking sessions uh, at least for a few weeks before your exam. Um, I personally joined a coaching and in my previous videos for MRCS Part A and Part B, I had uh, personally recommended a few coaching courses as well. But uh, in OAT case, I'm not going to recommend any uh, particular course or coaching center just because the coaching that I have taken was not as good as I expected. So it would be better if you do your own research and select a coaching center uh, which you prefer. Uh, anyway, I think all the coaching centers will uh, be able to give you a, an idea on each topic and the way that you should approach the exam, but choose the best one from it. Um, now, the final question or the most important question that is which is better or which exam you should take. This is something that even I was confused before um, applying for it. I went with OET and the reason for that was it was healthcare related. It was something that we are very much familiar with day to day. We are writing referral letters or discharge letters. We are familiar with the day to day con conversations in a healthcare environment. Uh, but if I had chosen IELTS, it would be a much more effort for me because I'm already uh, preparing for I uh, MRCS as well. So I didn't want an additional burden on me. Uh, and OET, I felt, is a much, much easier exam compared to IELTS. We can easily pass the exam if we have a proper coaching uh, and uh, just for uh, in one month preparation, we can clear the exam in the first attempt itself. And that's what I have done as well. Uh, but I think if I had taken IELTS, I've, I'm not 100% sure if I could have cleared it in the first attempt. Maybe I could have, but the thing is I needed more, much more effort in it. Even though it's a cheaper exam, what I have seen is in many cases, people uh, will score like eight, eight or 7.5 in all the subjects, but except for any one section in which they'll score nearly 6.5 or six or something. And because of that, they'll have to retake the exam and then they'll end up taking OET. So rather than uh, giving a difficult exam and do uh, having to take more and more effort for IELTS, I think as we have an option in the healthcare system of giving such a such an easy exam that is OET, always it's better to go with OET, even though it's a bit uh, a costly exam. But still, I think it is a guarantee that we'll pass in the first attempt itself. So yes, my op my opinion is OET definitely. So I think today's video will help you in making a better decision whether to choose OET or IELTS in your exam. And if there are any further queries, please comment in the comment section and I'll try to reply to it as soon as possible. Thank you.